This is Greg Vincent, uh, the editor of AgWeb. I'm talking to Lance Honig, who is the chief of the crops branch at USDA's National Ag Statistics Service. And Lance, you guys put out the report this morning on the uh, crop production and, and um, grain stocks report. And uh, shortly after that announcement came out, you sent another announcement saying that you were going to do a resurvey. Why don't you just fill us in on, on what led to that decision and, and uh, what you're looking for here? Okay. Well, it's, uh, of course, no surprise to anybody that uh, the harvest progress for corn and soybeans uh, this season was running well behind normal. Um, the survey work that we uh, did uh, for these end-of-season estimates uh, for corn and soybeans was what we call our December Ag Survey. Uh, that data was collected from producers uh, back uh, the very end of November and primarily the first couple of weeks of December. Um, and because of that, you know, the lateness of the harvest this year, there was a significant uh, portion of corn and soybeans in certain states um, that was still left to be harvested when we conducted those interviews. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to go back um, to producers um, in six states for corn, um, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, um, and for soybeans in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. And the producers we're going to go back to are those who, uh, when they responded to our survey back in uh, either late November or early December, uh, indicated that they still had acreage for those crops uh, that was yet to be harvested. Um, what we will do is we will recontact them and ask them uh, specifically of those acres that were left to be harvested, how many of them uh, were they actually able to harvest or still intend to. Now, why would you not resurvey Iowa at this point, Lance? I, in in mid-December, I believe I heard there were over 800,000 acres of corn still in the field. Well, what we did was, um, you know, the survey work that we conducted back in early December, um, part of what we asked the producer was for their uh, number of acres that were left to be harvested um, and their expected yield and production on those acres. And what we found was these were the six states for corn that, where that amount was uh, statistically significant, if you will, um, and you know warranted a recontact. Um, Iowa, uh, the the information that we collected back in that time frame was complete enough uh, that we didn't feel a need um, to revisit that area. Okay. Um, now, if we can talk about the report uh, specifically this morning, uh, a lot of people were, I think, surprised by the, um, the significant uh, uptick in, uh, or fairly significant uptick anyway, in, in uh, per acre yield. But there's a lot of concerns out there about test weights this year. Do you take test weights into account when you're you're estimating these uh, the yield? Um, not specifically in terms of the uh, data that we collect from the producer. I mean, we do not ask them. Um, for their test weight, we do not, you know, adjust the yields that they give us for test weight. Um, however, um, it is certainly possible or or likely, if you will, that producers would have taken that into account um, based on, you know, the acreage that they had harvested and, you know, perhaps delivered to the elevator and and uh, discovered indeed what they did have. Um, but, but again, for these end of season surveys, the information comes from the producer. We ask them what their um, actual yield and or production was. And in many cases, we're collecting production. Um, so therefore, um, that's somewhat factored in. Now the objective yield survey work that we do, um, we actually take measurements from the field that is used in conjunction with those indications as well, that survey data. Um, and because it is physical measurement, we do um, have some information that uh, you know helps us out in that area. Okay, um, Lance. Just uh, last uh, question then is what? what uh, when is the resurvey going to take place? What do farmers need to expect, and when will they see the results? Uh, the results, if um, if any changes are necessary, and of course until we collect that information, um, analyze it, and review it. Um, at this point, we don't even, you know, know for sure that any adjustments will need to be made. But if any changes are necessary, um, they will be published in the March crop production report, um, with the exception of North Dakota and South Dakota. 
Um, obviously, uh, we're operating on a little different time frame um, in those two states, and we have not yet determined exactly when uh, we'll be able to get back out there and conduct a meaningful re-interview in those two states. Um, but the remaining states, uh, we will have the data collected and summarized in time to uh, publish in that March crop production report if necessary. And you will not give any indication until that time whether the numbers will change? That is correct. Okay. All right. That's Lance Honig. He is the uh, chief of the crops branch at the USDA's division of uh, the National Ag Statistics Service. And Lance, appreciate your time. Thank you.